yourself to stay in this night season but weeping only indoors for a night joy I'm telling you, I don't usually holler like this. I don't usually holler like this, but I feel like hollering today. Joy comes in the morning. If the devil was going to kill me, he should have killed me in the night. If the devil was going to steal my joy, he should have stolen it in the night. If he was going to take my peace, he should have took it in the night. Weeping only indoors for a night. Joy! Somebody shout joy! Just shake hands with three people. Tell them it's your day, it's your morning. It's your morning. everyone and welcome to this week's Sunday of Joy. We're so glad you're here to celebrate with us. Today we're lighting the candle representing joy. Luke 1 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth in a town, a town in Gal Galilee. To a virgin pledged Mary to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are who? Highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. With you conceive and give birth to a son, and you call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and reign, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you in the, in the power of the Most High, will shadow, overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will, will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, her relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive and, and is in her sixth month. For, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be to me, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the, then the angel left her. Luke 1, 46 through 47. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in, my, in God my Savior. The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary to announce that she would have she, that she would be Jesus's mother. This must have come as quite a surprise. After all, Mary wasn't married yet, and she had a different plan for for her life. Gabriel reminded her that nothing is impossible with God. She could have been overwhelmed by the startling news, but she chose to respond with a song of joy. Nothing takes God by surprise. We can trust that God has an ultimate plan for our lives. Discover that joy that comes from believing in Jesus and God's plan for us. Now let's pray. Um, dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior. We can see how Mary trusted her plan and you fulfilled her heart with joy. Thank you for 
reminding us that you have a good plan for our lives, too. Help us find our joy in you, because your plans are always good. We love you, and we pray for these things. In Jesus' name, amen.
Praise the Lord. Are you singing in the middle of the storm this morning? How many of you got the joy of the Lord today? Woo! The joy of the Lord is my strength, and we hope to bring a little joy to you this morning. Um, different year, so a different program today. Um, I want to say before we um, share our program with you today, thank you so much to Christy Shock, can you put your hands together for Miss Christy Shock? She has helped us out. Morgan Shock, Mike and Mike Luthley and Renee Rodriguez. These guys have kept us going this year virtually, and we are so thankful to them for all they have done. You can have a seat this morning. Um, we're uh, going to present this morning a Christmas story um, as told by Peerless Kids. Um, before that, we're going to show you a short clip because we wanted our preschool to be represented as well this morning. It's been really hard for us to get everybody together. So representing our preschool this morning, you're going to see the beautiful Miss Eliana Nelson, and she's going to share some joy for, for you. And then directly after that, Peerless Kids are going to tell the Christmas story. she was um, praying for over her dinner. Before Jesus was born, um, Mary um, was awake and she was doing stuff, like cleaning her house or something. And then an angel came and said that she was going to have a baby. An angel came to tell them they were having a baby. Do not be afraid, for behold, you will bring forth a son and, sh and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will, become, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Marion was like, what's happening? She was, she was a virgin. And... and Well, she did. <laughs> She's the Lord's mother. <laughs> that she was kind of scared and kind of amazed. Because she wasn't ready? Because she didn't know anything and she was like, all of a sudden she's going to have a baby and she doesn't even know what to do. Probably, she was probably like a little bit like confused. Like, how am I supposed to have the of the Lord. She was shocked, I think. Um, I think she was pretty shocked because she she was she was like was not married and she was gonna have a baby and it was the son of God. It was the most important baby in the whole wide world. And then she told Joseph about it. He wanted to have Mary killed because he wasn't he didn't want to be the father of the God. The angel told, told Joseph to um, marry. No, I'm thinking. Oh, uh, he told him not to have. Well, she told him to be brave, be happy, because um, 
because Baby Jesus would eventually let us all go to heaven. The angel told Joseph that he was going to, um, Mary is going to have a baby and they were going to name it Jesus. You're going to have to um, come with Mary to Bethlehem since she's having a baby. I think after the angel told Joseph he was going, he was going to be the father of baby, of baby Jesus, I, I, I think he, he didn't want to be the father of Jesus, um, so he, so he tried to kill Mary. Pulled up a rug next to Mary and then took her hand. He freaked out. She immediately started packing up up Um. Somewhere along the way, <laughs> she met Joseph, and they they had to travel to like Jerusalem or something. Jerusalem, <gasps> Nazareth, Bethlehem, 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 Bethlehem. I knew that. And then they everybody had to go to Bethlehem because they because they had to go to the man's hometown because of like taxes and everything. And so the next day they packed all their stuff and they got on a donkey to go to Bethlehem. They, his parents had to go and travel and um, they had to ride on donkeys because there were no cars back. Oh yeah, I, I, I was, I was gonna say that. And they rode on a donkey. Um, all the men that they, when they came up to the door, all the men said that it was full, so they couldn't go in. And when they got there, all the houses and rooms were all filled with people. And they knocked on every single door. And. Then the other guy said, you um, can't. They tried to get in and in, but all of them were full. So he had to be born in a major, surrounded by lots of animals. And then, and then something amazing happened. Every single house was filled. They were just like Mary. They were all going to have a baby. I don't know how many of them were there, but I'm pretty sure it was all of them. Until they came to the last man, they told them, he told them to go to the stable for information. What I think it would look like is kind of like this little kind of house thing, but without the front walls and the back wall, and it just has like, it's where they keep the animals, maybe. So there's like hay and stuff. And then the shepherds came by following a star. By driving a car. So there's this bright light and the shepherds and wise men all saw it and came to that little stable in Bethlehem. And, and then after Jesus was born, all the angels were saying, glory to, the high, glory to the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And also there was a giant star. And shepherd. They saw the star. They saw the, they saw the barn. And shepherd. And they followed the big star. And shepherd. They followed the star to find baby Jesus. Oh yeah, I, I, I was, I was gonna say that. And then they went to a manger. And then had baby Jesus. And then the, all the baby animals. And then the wise men came and brought gold, frankincense, myrrh. The wise men? Um, they were servants of King Herod. The wise men brought baby Jesus, gold, mark and. Hi, Some sort of spice, and then another kind of spice. Some sort of merkin. Yes, merkin, freaking ice, man, merkin ice. Yes. A baby toy, 
a baby bottle, a baby blanket. Something special. Candy. <laughs> Gold. Firm. And what's it called? Peppermint? So, where was Jesus? Frankincense. It was frankincense. Good job. Um, so there was a wise man, and one run gold, one run frankincense, and then last one was Mo. They gave gifts to Jesus. They were very nice to Jesus. Do you know, do you know what gifts they gave him? Frankincense. Gold and myrrh. Myrrh. I said myrrh. Whatever. But King Herod was covering the truth of him. He 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 was saying that he wants them to get the um baby Jesus so he can um um what's it called? Worship him. King Herod was after King Baby Jesus. And they and he was lying to the wise men so they could go get the baby and then bring him to King Herod and kill him with a knife or something. I don't know what he was going to kill him with, but that hurts me just thinking about it. Oh yeah, I, I, I was, I was going to say that. And then they went to the staple, and that's where they had the baby. The nature was made out of wood and had hay in it. Animals, I think cows, sheep, and a donkey, and horses, and that's all I can remember. Animal? <laughs> I think the Lord was like there, but like not seen or something. I think there's like Mary, Joseph, and then the three wise men, and then shepherds, and then well, baby Jesus, and then, uh, Oh, the Lord's, the Lord's angel was there, and then there were a bunch of animals or something, because it was like kind of like on a, I don't want to say like farm or something. <laughs> they wrapped him in a blanket. And they laid him down like this. <laughs> like probably this big, with curly hair, and in this very smiley face. He had brown hair and a beard. <laughs> um, they were probably just like really happy and were just amazed. This will be the next king. Because like, it was like the Lord. So like, they're like, okay, our son's gonna be on top. But anyway, I'm happy baby Jesus is alive so he could come and die for our sins. Because he was very special and he was going to be a good king. He was going to save us. Because he brought love to the world. Because if he wasn't born, then uh, he wouldn't have been able to been go on the cross and die for our sins. Because he came to earth to die on the cross and take our sins away and wash all of our sins away. It's like like a hundred sins to back to zero. It's just the restart. They lived happily ever after. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. It's a it's not a fairy tale. It's a good tale. That's true.
my school's evil. <laughs> Are y'all want to scoot a little closer together? No. Arms length apart. Arms okay, length apart. Okay, are we ready? Okay. So now that we're talking about 2020. Can they see me? Yes, everyone can see me. Okay. Well, there's something about the star on the top of our tree. The star is not allowable on the top because it just, you know, it just, oh, it tries to fall on us. It tries to fall on us, so we put an angel on the top anyway. Okay, ready, go. Okay, so there, there was a place called, yes, there's no way I'm doing this. <laughs> Give them, give the Lord a hand clap of praise, first of all. Amen. And can we give these amazing kids, this amazing children's worship team, a hand? Congratulations. <clears throat> now, we, what you don't know, because, but you know you have to sometimes, is have a reward system. You know, and so we told the kids, you have to smile. 
you have to smile. And if you smile, I'll personally give you a $10 Chick-fil-A card if you smile. So you have to tell me. They did it in the first service, but crowd, you have to do it by way of applause. Did they smile in the second service? Did they? All right. Very good. Promises. Of course, I was going like this, you know, trying to... <laughs> Thank you, Miss Brooke, Miss Madison. You want it? There you go. There you go. And thank you so much. Oh. <laughs> Don't you have to give it to me anyway? <laughs> anyway, we, can you give them another hand? We are so proud of them. Yes, you just sit down. Just sit down. You can just stay seated right where you're at if you want to. Awesome. As we, we are so privileged to have amazing staff and children in this time. And, you know, a lot of times, especially, we look at, at this, this, this Christmas season, we look at 2020 and everything that's going on, and, and we realize, you know, it took a lot of behind-the-scenes uh, effort and people to, to put this thing together. It wasn't just a, uh, do, let's put it together last week kind of production. It was complicated. And it almost feels like the whole year of 2020 has been complicated, hasn't it? I mean, we started out this year, of course, you know, and if you were like many, we started out this year in that we had great plans. I mean, we were already beginning to think all the way back then about the children's musical and a choir and all the, and we had calendars put together. In fact, we as a as leadership team, were already looking at 2021 and how we can be intentional and things that we can begin to plan a year out in advance. And then it got complicated, right? Then March hit. And everything got complicated. It got complicated for, 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 uh, for school teachers. It got complicated for principals and for pastors. It got complicated. For, and in fact, some people have said, you know, every pastor, from speaking from my perspective, like every pastor became a televangelist overnight, whether they wanted to or not. You know, thankfully, we were ahead and we were already prepared. But no one could have prepared me, you know, for, for what lies ahead. And 2021 may be just as complicated. We don't know. But you know, the one thing that's not complicated is faith in Jesus Christ. And the one thing about, no matter, regardless of how complicated this is, I want to remind you what Paul, what Paul was talking about in, in Romans, when he wrote to the church in Romans, it'll be the shortest sermon that Pastor Adam has ever preached. Are you ready? <laughs> Pastor Kathy said amen. <laughs> in Romans chapter 10, verses 14, he says this, how then? Can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one in whom, in someone they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. You all got some beautiful feet. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes, by, comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Jesus Christ. You see, we can make, of course, in 2020 has been made complicated by a ton of different things, by, by COVID, by, you know, the cultural unrest, by political elections and so many different things, but maybe from a, from a global perspective, but what about you? But can I tell you the one thing about Christmas and the one thing about these children and the one thing that we can encounter that we learn as we have heard the Christmas story through the eyes and ears and mouths of PRC kids is that it's not really complicated at all. You see, 2020 may be complicated, but what Paul was trying to tell the church in Rome and what he was trying to remind us, what even Isaiah had a problem with, is that when he was prophesying all the amazing things about what would happen with Jesus, is that it wasn't really complicated. And you know what, what we sometimes as pastors and different ones and, we, and maybe parents trying to tell kids and trying to raise them up now is, does anybody hear our message? Does anybody hear what we're trying to say if Isaiah, it was complicated for Isaiah and it was complicated for Paul, it's going to be complicated for us. But you know what? The message of the gospel is not complicated at all. And in 2020, what we're trying to say in this last message I want to tell you is that right now there are, there, there, there's a lot of people who need to hear the message. And I want to remind you what Paul told church in Rome. How will they believe if they have not heard? And how can they hear if someone doesn't preach? And how can someone preach if they don't share the message of Jesus Christ? 
You see, now the important thing that I, I, if you haven't realized, a lot of times we don't give kids the credit that they deserve, right? I mean, as a parent, my kids teach me every day. I mean, they teach me a ton of different lessons and we could, and I'm not going to give them the pulpit because they could tell you what I need to learn still. But they teach us something every single day. And if there's one thing that we can learn from watching this beautiful presentation from our kids today is that it's not complicated. It's the gospel in your own words. You see, I'm convinced of this, that every single one of us have a story. Every one of us have a beginning. We, have, we call it a birthday. Every single one of us have an end date that we don't know yet. But you know, I heard a, 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 my father-in-law said one time in a message, he was saying, you know, there's, there's three important dates to be, that on the tombstone. There's the date that you were born, the date that you died, he said, but it's the dash in the middle is what tells your story. You're living your story right now. And you see, there's a lot of people right now, and, 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 and if we talk about this, we talk about the essential workers, and we talk about the, the nurses that we pray for every single day that are in the hospitals, and the doctors, and the cashier who is checking out your, your food, the truck driver who's delivering the goods to the, to the grocery stores in different places. You see, I'm, can I tell you, a lot of times we try to put everybody, are they essential or not? And can I tell you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're essential, especially in today's time. But you know what? We don't have to complicate this process. We don't have to complicate 2021 20 or 2021 at all. Just share the gospel in your own words. Don't try to tell them what the pastor said last Sunday. Tell them what God has done for you this morning. Tell them how he woke you up this morning. Tell them how he, how he provides for all of your needs. Tell the story of how God saved your life. You see, because your story is different than my story, but no one can tell the story because it's your story. It's your testimony. It's how God brought you from death to life. So this morning, our kids have taught us a very powerful thing about how the gospel is very simple. We, will we get it all right? No. But can I tell you, it's the heart behind the message. It's the spirit behind the story that makes the difference. And you know what? If you and I will just simply tell our story this Christmas season, we don't have to complicate it. We don't have to have a three-point sermon. We just have to have our life and how God is changing it. So tell the cashier as she's checking out your groceries. Tell the, 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 the waitress as she's delivering your food. It don't have to be long. Make it brief. But drop the seed of how Christ changed your life this Christmas season. It's not complicated. Because you know what? We're going to see this, this last clip reminds us what it's all about. Miss Renee, would you show that clip? Because he came to earth to die on the cross and take our sins away and wash all of our sins away. It's like a like hundred sins to back to zero. Which is just the restart. They lived happily ever after. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It's, a fa it's not a fairy tale. It's a good tale. That's true. Can't say it better than that. You see, the story is it's a good story. Your story is a fairy tale story. It's not a fairy tale, but it's good and it's true. You see, as we watch this, as we come across today and we join together in this time, we, we are so thankful for all of you being here for us today. But there are also many who are watching this beyond the walls of Pillars Road Church. If there's anybody that is here this morning or anybody that is watching online at any point in time, those kids hit it on the head. Is that when Jesus Christ came on a, and, and came as that baby in a, in a manger, it was the beginning of the Christmas story, right? But the story had more days and more dates. And that, that little boy would grow up as these children have grown up and continue to grow up. And that little boy became a teenager. Yeah, he was a great teenager. And he became a young adult. And he became an adult. And he went to a cross to die for my sins and for your sins. The amazing grace, the amazing uh, story about Jesus is that if we were the only ones who needed Jesus Christ to die on a cross, to come as a baby on Christmas and, and grow up and become that baby and die on a cross as, a, as, a, as an adult male, you know what? He would have done it just for us. If you were the only one who needed Jesus Christ to die on a cross for your sins, he would have done it just for you. Because just like the shepherds, just like the wise men, just like everyone who encountered Jesus Christ, 
As you go back into the story of Luke, you have, the, you have Zachariah, you have Anna, you have different ones who encountered Jesus after he was born, and they all had an encounter with Jesus Christ that changed their lives forever. You see, your story can start right now just by simply believing. You see, at Christmas time, it's all about believing. You hear that word, believe, believe, just believe, and we all. But you know, God tells us to do this, to come to the, to come, and this Christmas story, to come to faith with the same childlike faith as they do at Christmas. Just simply believe. That's not complicated. We just have to believe. So would you stand with me all across this building for just a few moments? My Christmas gift to you is a short sermon. (laughs) But in reality, we want to remind you that your story may not be a fairy tale. In fact, we were watching a a, a Christmas video last evening, and it was uh, was one that Braylon wanted to watch. And it was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool story. And at the end of it, it 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 was like, you know, hey, it doesn't always appear to be what it is. You know, life is not a fairy tale. I mean, oftentimes I, I watch Braylon still and used to watch Brooke when she was older, you know, much younger. They would get the little baby dolls and they would, they would play and they would, they would have the princesses and they would have this idea that I'm going to grow up and I'm going to marry a Prince Charming and life is going to be happily ever after. Has your story ever gone like that? Or does your story have some twists and turns, some unexpected, complicated events? Can I tell you, that's probably true for all of us. But there's something about your story that what you don't know is that when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, the moment that we can't turn our lives to him, a new chapter is written. The page is turned. For those golf enthusiasts, the mulligan is given. You get a redo, a restart, a redo, a do-over. Sometimes we all need that. But can I tell you about the power of the gospel of Jesus is when God gives us the do-over, it's the beginning of a brand new chapter. So if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior this morning, or maybe you come and you, you forgot because 2020 has been so complicated because everything that has been taking place is so complicated, you forgot that it was that simple. That with all of the stress and all of the stuff that's going on in your life, and I'll be honest, sometimes in this season, it doesn't necessarily feel like the happiest time. There's so much mentally and physically and emotionally. But can I tell you, when we bring it all back to the gospel, it brings it all into perspective. And that is this. That whatever the enemy is trying to do throughout all of this, and no matter what the enemy is trying to do in your life and in your story, that God has the power to turn it around for good. And I promise you, we're going to make it. I promise you, we're going to get through this. If we will place our trust and our faith in Jesus Christ, we're going we're to thrive and not just survive. You want to know where hope is? Look in the mirror. Do you want to know what peace is? Look in the mirror. Do you want to know where joy can come from? Look in the mirror. Because Christ lives in you. And it can be exposed to everyone else. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this this beautiful story, Lord, of how the children have told it from their own words. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit, God, would seal into our hearts the joy of the Lord, Father, the joy that comes from serving you, the joy that comes from you wiping all of our sins away, Lord, like taking a hundred sins and making them go back to zero sins. Father, we're so thankful that you wipe our sins away. All of the depression, all of the oppression, all of the sickness, all the, all the stuff that comes in our life that tries to weigh us down. Father, when we trust you, when we place our trust in you, Father, you remind us that favor is resting upon our lives. So Father, there's some twists and turns, some unexpected, complicated turns. Lord, that some people in this congregation are watching online are going through. Father, I pray over our college students. I pray over our parents. I pray over our essential workers, our principals, our teachers, our pastors, our ministers, every single one. Father, we pray Luke 2.52 over them today. That as we go forward in this Christmas season, that we'll remind ourselves at the end of that Christmas story in Luke 2, the very last scripture says that you, Jesus, grew in wisdom and in stature and the favor of men and God. Father, I pray favor over our families, favor over our lives, favor over our finances, favor over our ministries, favor as we go and tell our story. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. 
You may be seated for just a few moments. We want to give just a few presentations. Ladies, if you'll get, if you'll get ready, we want to do that. We have been so, so, so very blessed uh, by this presentation again today. We want to say a very special thank you. Often, you can join me on stage, ladies, so I'll have you give them just a minute. A very, very special thank you to those who often you don't see. Mr. Mike Barnes back in the sound booth has run the sound this morning. Thank you so much for all of that. Mike and Renee. Back in the back, they have put this, you saw, put this diet for the IT team. Thank you so very much. They love it. But you know what? There was, um, we are so very blessed, of course, here at Peerless Road Church. We have visionary leadership uh, that has been taking place. And so, um, you know what's taking place? A lot of churches uh, had hoped, you know, back in, in, when they began to plan and look at this, and we realized they hoped to have children's musicals. They hoped to have all this stuff. But I am so thankful that we had a visionary team. That when we came, all came together, we're like, we want to. We want to have choirs. We just don't feel like it's the wisest thing to do. But you know what? And we have planned so many things, and we've had to cancel so many things, but I'm so thankful for Christy and Morgan, who last year came on as the Christmas uh, uh, children's musical directors, and they will continue to do so until the rapture takes place. So, Morgan and Christy have uh, came to Pastor Kathy with this idea, so would you ladies stand? We've got a small gift from you. Who's got those? Would you go give them to your mom? And so, Miss Christy, can we tell them thank you? This is all their idea this morning. We are so thankful for them. Awesome. Way to go. And then, of course, uh, uh, Julie Coleman has been working with our children. She's stepped, gone to Pastor Kathy. You want to know how you can serve? Just go to a pastor and say, how can I help? And so Miss Julie went to Pastor Kathy and said, hey, we want to work with the children in leading worship. And so if you didn't notice this morning, they worshiped, right? And so what I want you to know is that when they're back in kids' church, they are worshiping, they are encountering the Word of God, they are encountering the Spirit of God, and we are so thankful that they're learning how to worship before they ever get here. Miss Julie, would you stand? Can we let her know how much appreciated we are? Amen. And so, of course, and then uh, next week we're going to be honoring all of our staff. And so, if you have, uh, we're going to we're doing our best. I'll say that from a very transparent point of view, we're doing our best to with the cases. And we've got so many people within Peerless Road Church that are sick, and their extended families are sick. But we feel between the two services, as I said last night, we can remain open. So we fully anticipate on uh, having service next week. In addition to that, Christmas Eve, if you didn't see the letter on Christmas Eve, from 10.30 a.m. to 12.15, we have got it blocked off uh, with a reservation system. We're going to be taking Christmas Eve communion. I'm getting there, don't worry. And uh, Christmas Eve communion. Uh, and the way that we have it set up, we think that we, we've got it set up, planned enough to where we can accommodate 40 uh, individuals safely or 40 individuals or families, you know, uh, 40 people total, uh, safely, socially distanced, and, and healthy uh, in a Christmas Eve communion. So this is what we need. If you want to come and take communion in person, go to the website, and you can mark your re there's reservation times in 15-minute slots. That means at 1030, 1045, 11, 1115, 1130, 1145, 12, and the last one will go off at 1215. We're going to be monitoring that, and so we can, that's how you can do that. And so we're going to do our best to make sure that we can do, honor the Christ and light the Christ candle and have a Christmas Eve communion together. But next week we'll be honoring our staff, and so uh, if you have your Christmas offerings that you would love to bless them with, you can turn those in. Uh, any offerings that you have, this amazing ministry from our, our children this morning, of course, it comes out of Peerless Ministries. And so when you give in your tithes and Peerless, Peerless Ministries, you are personally and intentionally influencing uh, these children. Amen? And so thank you so much for your giving. You can give in that online at peerlessroadchurch.com or in the boxes as you leave. But why is Braylon still holding some flowers? She's wondering. Because we have a, the world's best children's pastor. Do you know that December the 1st, she completed her 15th year of dedicated, intentional service to Peerless Road Church. Would you stand? Pastor Kathy, we love you. We have a special gift for her that will be given to her from a church for that 15 years that will be given to her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
You can remain standing if you want to. Miss Julie, Pastor Kathy, you can join us and stand if you want to as we get ready to leave. We are so blessed to have a remarkable staff. We do ask uh, that you would pray for us. Of course, as we tell that Christmas story, I want to just drop this as we pray for one for another. Normally, we pray over our prodigals. Jody Robinson, Jody and Joni, who used to be Connect Group leaders here with us, they st- are still very faithful with us. Jody's father is in Tanova now, battling for his life. He's battling from COVID. And one of the main reasons that we say this, to share the story, it's not complicated, is because there are people like Jody right now that need to hear the story. Jody's father does not know the Lord. The prayer over this past week and a half that he's been in the hospital is that somehow someone would share the gospel that he would turn his heart over to the Lord. Yesterday, we got a re- received a call from, from Joni, Jody's wife, that said they've given him dialysis. They're giving him a second round, and they're not so sure that he's going to make it. That's how crucial it is to tell your story in the time and age that we live in because you don't know who needs to hear it. And church, life and death, heaven and hell are hanging in the balance of your story. And there are prodigals just like that on the altar that as we get ready to leave today, we want to pray for them. We want to pray that a nurse, a spirit field, a believer would go in there. Because can I tell you about the, God, the grace and the, the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is that if, when Jesus rose from the dead, that, that we know that his disciples were all huddled together. They were basically uh, quarantined in a room because they were scared. And you know what he did? He could have left them there. But instead he walked through the wall. And he pointed to Thomas and said, see my hands? See my feet, touch my side. Can I tell you, when you and I pray, when we share the gospel, but when you and I pray, it walks through the walls of a comatose state. It walks through the walls of fear. It walks through the walls of every faith blocker there is. That's how we pray. That's how we're going to pray right now for Jody's dad and the rest that are going through this time. Are you ready to pray and believe? Let's do it. Father, we're so thankful, Lord, for these amazing children, Lord, as they they have shared the gospel in their own words. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would allow your Holy Spirit, God, to, to, to light a fire. Lord, in the same way, Lord, that you would shine a light. Lord, as that light, as that angel, that star from above, Father God, shone light on the shepherds and they were sore afraid. Lord, as it guided the wise men, Lord, as they were in search of the the Savior. Father, we pray right now that we would be the light. Lord, that you would, Lord, impart into us. Lord, that you would empower us through your Holy Spirit. Lord, the ability and the urgency to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, to let us see. Lord, allow the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation. Father, that we would have a discerning spirit Spirit, Father God, to be able to discern hopelessness from hope, Lord, to discern a frown, Lord, whether it's a broken heart or a broken dreams or a broken life, that, Father, that we have the words of the gospel, we have the words of hope, we have the words of life. And, Father, you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, so that the whole world may have life. Lord, would you empower our nurses, our doctors, Lord, our first responders, our essential workers of every kind. Father, would you empower them with favor, but empower us to share Share the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As you get ready to leave, we're going to remind you, please uh, wear your mask as you're exiting. We also, we would love to see each one and, and we have family and friends, but please, I want to ask you, don't congregate in the sanctuary. Please step on the outside and feel free to congregate on the outside of the church building. Please exit out the side doors if you don't mind. That's how we are maintaining our safe and social distance. God bless you today. Have a very Merry Christmas if we don't are not able to see you again, but we'll look forward to seeing you next week. There will be no children or youth Sundays or Christmas parties this week as well. They've been canceled because of, of, of COVID concerns.